Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes and in this week we're going to talk about the 1.4 release. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, video where we talk about all of the things that are going to be happening in 1.4 or have happened because that is the release that you can see on the screen. Well, maybe I'll, I'll punch it up. But uh, you can see it's got a little orange bar that says that it's in uh, draft mode. But all of the downloads are ready. We're just waiting for the release um, outreach team to basically put together all of their documentation and uh, social media posts. They want to get everything wrapped up for tomorrow. So by the time you watch this, the 1.4 release is probably out anyway. So I figured it would be a great time to talk about some of the things that are going on. Uh, first of all, let's talk about 1.4. It has been quite a hard release to get finished. Um, there's been a lot of bugs. Uh, a lot of refactoring that happened for GTK4 caused a lot of bugs. Um, there's a lot of bugs that we wanted to also fix as well to make things better. So uh, is 1.4 ready for release? I say yes. Does 1.4 have problems? Yes. Do we know what some of those problems are? Mostly yes, we do. Um, do we think that 1.4 is better than 1.3? I think yes, I think that is true. There are some really interesting features and I think we fixed a lot of stuff. And am I wearing this release t-shirt back to front so I can show you the design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about the actual release itself. Um, it's not as feature fat as the 1.3 release, uh, pretty much because a number of um, background things have been happening. A lot of developers were working on GTK4. You won't even see that stuff yet. Basically, all of that work just caused bugs. Uh, in in 1.4, it didn't actually help a lot. Um, and then I was obviously busy doing the color stuff. The CMYK work isn't finished yet, so it's not even in this release. So most of my work for 2024 and half of 2023 is still yet to arrive in a released version, but that's okay. Um, you know, I will keep you up to date with these videos about the ongoing work, and hopefully that you'll be happy with the results once 1.5 comes out. Um, but honestly, I think we got a lot done in 1.4, and um, despite being distracted, despite despite having these more long-term view um, on like the way the code is being developed, um, there was still plenty of things going on. Uh, plenty of contributors as well, not just me, but like people um, bringing in their own ideas, bringing in their own fixes. So let's talk about some of the uh, items in the release notes. You, I, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Marin Hackman, who does the release notes and looks after the, this particular documentation. It's hard work to keep track of all of the things that have been developed over the year. I know doing these videos, it's hard enough just keep keeping track of my own work. Um, but she manages to actually get a, do a document put together with all of the sort of top things that people want to see, plus little animations, plus graphics. So well done, Marin. You know what we'll do? We'll just go through the release highlights. So um, there's a new filters gallery, um, which is going to be really interesting. Like Filters are not, I think, used a lot, but by the artists that use fil filters, they use filters a lot. And so hopefully this will improve that user experience and maybe it'll get new people uh, who are maybe not familiar with how to use fil filters in Inkscape to use them. Uh, these are non-destructive filtering elements that can allow you to basically use things that you might expect to see on a, a Photoshop or a GIMP level um, raster effects, but allow you to apply them to a vector drawing. Um, they're uh, post-operative, which means that they happen after the vectors are drawn and then they apply to the how it's rendered to the screen. Um, we have modular grids and um, axionomic grids. Uh, these are basically ways in which you can snap things to a document. Modular grids just basically allows you to create little boxes that have spaces between them. There's been a ton of fixes, I'll be honest. Um, I had a, a um, student work with me, um, James, who I think I did a video on. Uh, who, who refactored a lot of the grid stuff, but a couple of other developers have also been involved in Im improving the grid stuff. I think I fixed a bunch of stuff too. So hopefully grids in 1.4 will be a lot better. Um, there's a new sw swatches dialogue and the palette file handling has been improved. 
That's Mykov, who's been doing a lot of the swatches work. And I think Adam Bellis was also involved in helping with the design work. Um, we have a unified font browser pre preview. I believe that was a Google Summer of Code project. Um, it's, I think it's a preference, right? Yeah, I think it's a it's in preview mode, which basically means that it's, it's a thing that we want to move to in the future, but it's not yet available as the sort of default. Um, there's the fast image clipping uh, shape builder. This will be the feature that uh, Logos by Nick showed off and a couple of other people uh, that basically allows you to take a big raster image and draw some objects on top of it and then use those objects as stencils to basically punch out each of those little bricks from a big uh, raster. I use it myself when I'm doing uh, screenshots. I can take a single screenshot and then just punch out all the little icons and things and then just move them around to maybe show off a new design. Um, but I know that there are other really in interesting ways to do it. Also improved, but I don't think documented here fully, is the way in which clipping masks are now part of the way the uh, shape builder works. So if you've got a whole bunch of shapes that are, that are clipped using a clipping mask, that clip region will be a part of the shape builder objects. So it should be something you can select around, hopefully. Um, let's see what else we got. Okay, we got the uh, beta of the Affinity Designer File Importer. We've talked about this before, but if you have AF design files, this is not going to be entirely complete, but it is going to be a decent first step on being able to import AF design files directly into Inkscape. No messing around, no hacks. The data itself is read in. And uh, when you find errors, and you will find problems, please report them because um, in 1.5 or even in 1.4.1, we'll be able to improve that uh, file exporter and hopefully be able to give you like a fully and complete ability to bring in those files. So one of the things to the document properties that I added is the ability for you to retain the um, physical dimensions of your drawn objects when uh, changing the scaling of the document. This is a very subtle uh, property that most Inkscape users will never touch they'll go in and they'll see it's either one or it's uh, millimeters to pixels and they'll never cha change it. But people don't know what they're doing, especially if you're consuming these SVGs outside of Inkscape. This scaling factor impacts how those numbers that are stored in that SVG file appear. And uh, so oftentimes you may want to have a clean file with one millimeter per unit or one inch per unit. And this allows you to uh, retain the scaling of whatever existing objects that you have. There's some export dialogue improvements. The export dialogue is still on its way to being its full self. I still have uh, work to do in order to make the export dialogue fully complete the way that I envisage it, but it's definitely sort of on its way. There's been a bunch of improvements to the way that the batch exporter works and a whole bunch of fixes for how the batch exporter works in terms of um, multiple pages. Um, there's been a whole bunch of improvements to the objects of the object properties dialogue. Uh, Mykov has actually been working on this dialogue and I'm actually using the master version where he's got a lot more of these Im improvements in place. And I can say that like he's on a trajectory to making this a very comprehensive dialogue. I'm very interested to do a user experience test with it um, because it's a different way of changing the properties of objects. And I don't think it'll appeal to everybody, but I think there's a segment of people that are really gonna like his work when it lands completely, but you'll be able to see some of that work in 1.4. And palettes. So there's been, been a bunch of additions to the way that palettes, usually we'd only read in GIMP palettes. My has added the ability to read in a bunch of different file types. Um, because this is 1.4 and my color stuff isn't in this one, uh, those colors are all still red, green, blue. But in 1.5, because of this work, the palette work will mean that the uh, the CMYK stuff and the lab colors and the CIE co colors, they'll, they'll all be imported correctly as those color space spaces. Um, so once again, it's another feature which is sort of like on its way to being its future self. Um, there's my uh, folding booklet tem template that I added ages ago. So that's pretty much it for the... Um, features. A lot of what's in 1.4, I hope you will find, is all of the bug fixes. There's been an awful lot of work on just trying to make Inkscape a bit faster, a bit better, a bit more stable, a bit less eager to crash. 
there are no guarantees. As I said, a lot of the work on GTK4 caused a lot of disruption. We still don't know if we've shaken all of those bugs out. So if you do see a crash, uh, report it because we will still make a 1.4.1. We'll probably still make a 1.4.2 as well because 1.5 is going to be pretty unsta unstable as well and uh, may take us some time to finish. So yeah, please continue to report, uh, continue to test. Don't accept an Inkscape that crashes. Don't accept low quality. Um, join in on the community, contribute to Inkscape if you can, if you have time, or join my Patreon if you like the work that I do and you think that me spending more time on Inkscape is worth your money. And um, yeah, thank you for watching this video. Thank you to all of my sponsors that basically paid for my time to work on Inkscape 1.4 and their money is inside that release now, right? You should all be very proud of having spent your resources, your effort, making Inkscape better. And I think it's worth pointing out that like not all open source projects can say that they have users that are standing up and making a claim onto how to invest into the project, making decisions about what's important to them and what bugs need to be fixed. So I want to give a big thank you to all of you. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time.